With just a tiny bit of this, we can turn those faded, worn out leather seats that look like this into this. What's up everybody, my name is Fritz and welcome to the channel. That's right, this tiny bit of leather balm is more than enough to cover us for two leather seats that are starting to show some fading and discoloration. I do also realize that trying to match up black is a whole lot easier than other colors. So what I would recommend is if you don't have black leather seats, pick up a few colors that are in the same neighborhood and try to match it up to the seat as close as possible. You can try working with areas that are off to the side and on the back, as well as the front bottom side here is another good place to test this out. And by no means do you have to remove the seats in order to complete this job. It's just easier to film and work with the seats while they're out. But you could definitely do this job with the seats in the car the entire time. If you do decide to remove the seats, they're held in by four T50 bolts and a wiring harness. Just make sure to center the seat for an easier removal. And since the passenger seat is most likely in better condition and less visible to you, I would start and learn here first. That way you're more familiar with the product when applying it to the driver's seat. First, we'll need to clean the seat by removing any dust or dirt with a vacuum. Then clean it with a dedicated leather cleaner. We don't want any two-in-one products that have a cleaner and conditioner or any oils in it. We want the bare leather when we apply the balm. So I even rinsed the seat with a damp microfiber cloth afterwards and allowed it to dry. So if it's been a while since you've cleaned your seats, go ahead and repeat this step one more time. To ensure all the cleaner has been removed, wipe it down with a damp microfiber cloth and allow it to dry. This should leave you with a very matte finish, indicating we're ready for our test area. Since a little bit of this goes a long way, a very small amount is good enough for our test section. Just work it in and allow it to dry for a few minutes. If you're happy with the results, proceed forward with that color. As in this case, it did a tremendous job. Depending on the angle, you won't even know it was damaged. And as far as application, these makeup sponges worked much better than the supplied square. And trust me, you're gonna need more than what was given in the balm kit. So I left a link in the description that should be more than enough to tackle this job. Start by working in a light coat over the entire damaged area and use the leftover balm in the sponge for the seams. This is where the long tip of the triangle comes in handy. It's able to thread the seam perfectly without actually touching the threads. But depending on the extent of the damage, you may need to pick between the leather finish or your stitching. Since I'm planning on restitching the seats in the future, I opted for the former. Allowing for a couple of minutes in between coats is good enough, with the last coat done in a circular motion to fully work in the balm. And if you're trying to save your stitching, go ahead and remove any excess balm in the seams. Now let it rest for about 30 minutes to an hour, just enough time to clean the floor mats and vacuum the floor if the seats are out. Or if your car is going to be stationary for a day or two, you can start prepping the other seat. When you come back, you'll see that there's some high spots on the seat. With a damp microfiber cloth, go over those areas as well as the section where the balm meets the good portion of the leather. This will help the balm blend in better once it fully cures. And expect some to get on your towel, but our affected areas should retain their new color. Which might not be exactly like OEM because of the physical damages, but it's much better than before. When compared side by side, you can definitely see the difference in grain pattern. But if you're only concerned with that quick glance as you get in the car, this definitely blended in well. Now allow it to cure for 24 to 36 hours. In this case, I went all the way up to the 36 hour mark before cleaning and conditioning the seat. Once the balm has fully cured, you can treat that section just like normal leather. Also keep in mind that the first cleaning will remove some of the excess balm as well but after that, it should be fine. Just continue through the leather cleaning and conditioning steps as normal, with each step removing less balm than the previous one. Also remember to allow the conditioner to cure for four hours. As you can tell, this job is fairly easy, yet time consuming. So plan to be without your car at least for the next day in order to get an end product similar to this. 
For the dry receipt, I did a few things differently. Since there was more damage, I did four coats instead of three and let it cure for only 24 hours. I really wanted to see what impacted the cure time more, the amount of balm applied or keeping it in a cool, dry area like the garage. After the conditioning step, it seemed to have a similar amount of balm on the towel as the passenger side. So if you keep it in a cool, dry place like your garage, you should be perfectly fine, especially when you add on the additional cure time for the leather conditioner. If you did happen to remove the seats, just plug them back in and torque to 35 Newton meters before you can bask in the hard work of your refinished leather seats that you'll be proud to see every time you get in and out of your BMW. So for $30, I would say that this bomb did a tremendous job of matching up that faded section to the rest of the leather seat. But if you're still unsure, if you wanna take on this job, then I would say start off with a simple cleaning and conditioning of your leather seat. You'll be surprised with how much of an improvement it actually makes. If you don't believe me, check out the video right over here. And I'll see you in that one.